Okay, time for Bandit level 23 to level 24. Uh, we have a level goal. The program is running automatically at regular intervals from cron, the time-based job scheduler. Look in etsy slash cron.d for the configuration and see what command is being executed. Note, this level requires you to create your own first shell script. This is a very big step and you should be proud of yourself when you beat this level. And note too, keep in mind that your shell script is removed once executed, so you may want to keep a copy around. Same commands as last time, I believe. Um, okay, so let's. This this is very similar. We've done this we've done this a few times now. Um, although we have this note that's saying that we're going to be creating a shell script. Um, so this is quite a step up from the previous ones where we've just been reading shell scripts. This time we have to kind of be a bit more uh, confident with the syntax. Um, and you know we're not going to have to create anything um, complicated by any means but it's still a big step uh, so let's start and see how we get on um, we can start just exactly the same way as we have been before so we can move into this etsy cron.d directory have a look at the files in there note that cron job bandit 24 is probably going to be the one we want because level 24 is next um, so let's have a look at that file we can see that uh, a script is being run as bandit 24 it's this script here so we can copy and look at that script now I have I've not mentioned really what the time um, sort of options are for these cron jobs uh, these stars here, these five stars, just basically mean that this this job is going to um, execute every every minute. Uh, so you can change these different positions, the different numbers, uh, and then the the job will ske be scheduled for different times. Basically, this first um, star means the the minute of the hour that the job happens. This one means it's the um, hour of the the day. This one is the day of the month. This one is the month and this one is the day of the week so you can you've got quite a lot a, a, a big breadth of options basically you can specify quite a complex or quite a, a you know very um, uh, exact time for this for these jobs to um, be scheduled for which is really handy right but anyway we don't really need to know too much about that so let's have a look at this script Okie dokie dokies. So we've got this. Uh, we're being interpreted by the, the Bash language again. This my name equals who am I? We've seen this before. We know that this is going to evaluate to 20, Bandit 24. So my name is going to be the same as Bandit 24. Now here we are. Here's the main, here's the sort of more complex part. We've then got this CD into Varspool my name. So we're changing directory as the script. Um, into this thing and it's going to be Varspool Bandit 24 right because because of my name here we've got this nice little status sort of message um, executing and deleting all scripts in Varspool my name and then we've got this for loop now um, if you've not done for loops and you know basic programming before a for loop just sort of iterates over a collection of something um, so for instance in this case we're going to have four i, so some variable i, in star. Now we've seen the wildcard before in um, bash. That means anything. So what this means is that it's going to find any file. So i is going to become any file in this current directory. It's also going to become any file that begins with uh, a dot, which means all the hidden files as well. So i is going to iterate across all the files in this varspool um, bandit24 directory and then for each of those files it's going to check with this if statement um, it's going to check if the variable i which is the file name is equal is not equal to a single dot and it's not equal to two dots which basically is just saying we're checking that the file we've got, we, we're currently working on isn't one of the two special um, files that point to the directory we're in and that point to the directory above. 
uh, if it's not either of them, then we we execute this block of code, right? We're going to handle the file. We get this echo message. Um, we for we we put in the the owner. Uh, so this is going to we can sort of like just look at this and sort of see that it's it's checking the owner of the file. Um, and then it's it's saying if the owner of the file is bandit23, which is who we currently are, then we have this timeout command. Now what the timeout command does is it executes something, um, but it will, if after a certain period of time, it, it will kill the command. So what this is saying is, you know, like after nine seconds, I believe, um, I know this only is a very high level sort of understanding, but this is saying after some period of time, if this we're executing um, the file that we're currently working on, because this is just in this directory and the file that we have, you know, in our for loop, so it's going to execute the script. But if the script hasn't, but after a certain amount of time, it's just going to kill the script dead. Now, obviously, what that's doing is just preventing us from writing some really malicious script that just like is an infinite loop or something and then the poor server is going to sit there trying to trying to execute it for eternity yeah so this this command just says after a certain period of time we kill the script dead this just ends the if statement and then afterwards we've got this rm which is remove um, so what this is doing is after the, this block is finished um, it's just removing the uh, the script and then done so it's doing exactly what it says, right? It's executing and then deleting the scripts in this var spool my name directory. Okay, so we know then that we need to get the password for bandit24. Uh, we know this script executes as bandit24 and we know that we want to be bandit24 and read the Etsy bandit pass bandit24 file. Um, that's the sort of our aim, yeah? So if this is executing the scripts in this folder or directory, we need to create a script that it will read that will somehow pass us the information from the Etsy bandit pass bandit24 password file, right? Because if we can make a script that does that, then that will allow us to see the password from that password file. I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is where the creating a script comes in. Okay, um, And if we're going to make a script and we're going to sort of mess around with these uh, sorts of things, then probably the best place to do this would be in the temp folder. You know how before we, we made a directory in the temp folder where we've got write permissions so we can create scripts and it's sort of like a base from where we can work. Um, so, with that in mind, I'm going to use the, the make directory uh, command and I'm going to make a folder in the temp. So, I'm just going to call it Dean. Why not? Okay. And then I'm going to move into that. So, now I'm in my temp folder where I will have write permissions so we can make a script essentially. So, making a script. We have not um, used any text editors so far, uh, and this, the most simple one is nano. So nano is like a command line um, text editor, and it's super easy to use, so we're, we're, we're going to use nano. So we say nano, and then we specify the, the, uh, the file name. So I'm just going to call it like deanscript.sh, right? So this is going to be created in our current directory, and we hit uh, enter. It says something about permission denied, but it says press enter to continue, so we just carry on. Okay, so now we're in nano, um, which allows us to make a nice little shell script. And yeah, it's super easy to use. You've, we've got It tells you all these little shortcuts at the bottom, um, this little carré symbol is uh, control, so control and X is exit. Uh, 
and control and O is save and, and so on. Okay, so we need to make a script. So as you noticed in the, the scripts we've already looked at, they all start with this thing called a shebang, which is a hash and then an exclamation mark. This has to be on the top line, um, and this is going to be what signals uh, to the system what sort of language we're going to be um, reading this script as. Uh, we're going to be using bash, so we just write that. Okay, so now what do we do as our script? Well, we want to read Remember, this script is going to be executed as Bandit24, so we want to read the password file. So that's just cat, right? Um, and we know it's in Bandit Pass, Bandit24. Okay, so that should be fine, okay? Um, and all we want to do is, is pass that information on to us. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, we can write it to this temp folder that we're currently in. We have read permissions on that temp folder, um, so we will be able to read this file, right? So we can just do the uh, the redirect, and we're going to redirect and write it to Dean, and we're going to call it password.txt. Why not, hey? Um, okay, so and is there anything else we need to do? Not particularly, right? That's literally all we're looking to try and do is to get that password in a place where we can read it. Uh, so this command will satisfy that. So no need to be any more complicated. Let's just use this. So we can use Control and X to exit. And it will ask us if we want to save. So we hit Y to save. And it will then ask us what the file name is. And we just keep it as Dean script. And hit Enter. So now in our bandit23 folder we have this Dean script. Okay, so now there's a couple of little subtle um, things we need to remember when we when we now try to use this script. Um, is one, it needs to be executable. Uh, when when this script tries to run it, if the script is not executable it's gonna just have an error and so this will then just fail, right? So this needs to be executable. And when we first create it, it's not. If we look at the long format, we can see that the permissions, there's no execute permissions, right? So the first thing we need to do is make it executable. So we can change mode. And if we just do plus X on Dean script, then what that does is make it executable for everyone. Okay? And you can see how now we've got this Dean script in blue as well to show that it's executable. Okay, so that's one thing. There's another important thing here is that in our script we made it so that the output of our cat command is wrote to this um, directory, right? Now if Bandit24 didn't have write permissions to this directory, then it's not going to work. There's going to be an error and nothing's going to happen when this script is sent through. So we also need to make sure that, that Bandit24 has write permissions to this directory. Um, if we do the long... Oh, sorry. If we do the long list format for all of them so that we can see this dot, we can see that the owner has write permissions but the group and and users do not. So we need to make sure that, that everyone has write permissions. Okay, so we're going to change plus write on dot. So now we can look. And oh, okay. So whatever I've done there has not worked. Um, and I'm not sure exactly why, but I can I can tell another a very quick way to just 777. If you remember um, before we used numerical, uh, the numerical notation where 7 means read, write and execute permissions. For ev so 777 means read, write and execute permissions for absolutely everyone. 
Um, and let's do that. Let's see what happens now. So now you see that we're just like got the full the full range of permissions on here, okay? And that's the that's the setup. That's the setup for our script, and that's really important because otherwise you could be sending a, a what seems like a very valid script um, and just not getting anything and just sort of being confused and wondering what the hell's going on. So you've always got to remember the permissions of other people um, when you're trying to sort of make these like exploits. Okay, so now with that said and done, we can try and move this script and uh, get it to execute. So what we're going to do is we know from up here that it needs to go to this vast ball bandit24 directory. So bearing in mind note 2 here that the shell script is removed once executed and it might be useful to keep a copy around, we're not going to move our script, we're just going to copy a version of it to that folder. So we're going to use the cp command, copy, dean script, and we're sending it to vast ball bandit24. Okay, so we're looking good. So we're going to hit enter. And now we wait. So every minute that folder should be sort of that cron job should activate. It will run through that directory, executing every script and removing them. And with any luck, if we've if we've correctly configured our script, it will see our script, see it was made by Bandit23. It will execute the script, it will remove it, and when it executes it, it should write the password from bandit24's Etsy um, file to our temp dean directory as uh, password.txt. So I've waited sort of a minute so we can hit ls and see what's in our in our directory. And oh yeah, we've got a password.txt file. So we can have a little look at that. And there's the password. So that's quite cool, right? It, it seems a little bit, uh, it's quite magical the first time you do something like that. Um, especially if you can follow the, the permissions and everything that's going on there. Um, but yeah, how cool, right? Um, so we've, we've created our first script. Uh, we've, we've sort of had to think a little bit outside the box there. It was a simple script, but it's, and we've used this like temporary directory and, and all sorts of things. So it's, it's all coming together now, right? All these different, um, things we've learned, uh, and yeah, just really exciting. So, um, if you followed that and you were managed to, um, do it yourself, then that's awesome. And, uh, let's keep going and, um, having fun. Okay. I'll see you in the next one.